Hi guys, welcome to the Nitty McPurly podcast. Uh, I am Devin Ventry and you can find me everywhere as Nitty McPurly. Um, Instagram especially is where I spend most of my time. So if uh, you want to follow me there, that would be great. You can email me at devin at nittymcpurly.com and I'll put that up on the screen. Um, it's been a while. I haven't uh, been with you guys in a little bit. Life has been a little bit insane. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. It's been a little crazy. I'm going to do a little life update at the end of the podcast where I normally um, do my, so here's what happened. So if you want to, if you have any interest in that, hang in there and you can hear about that. Um, A few changes. One change is that I am no longer using my Ravelry group. Um, I just didn't use it that often. Um, Not much happened there. I really feel like I didn't give it the attention that it needed. However, I can't seem to delete it, so it's still there, um, but I don't use it. So if you post something there, I won't see it. If you want to get in touch with me, Instagram or email, that's the best way. So uh, another thing is now I have a new website. Yay! I'm so excited about that. So uh, my show notes are no longer going to be on my website because my website is a different, it's a shopping cart site now. So instead, I'm going to be doing my show notes below. So if you have any questions about what I'm talking about here or you need more details, you can look at the show notes. But I want to tell you about my new site because I'm so excited. Um, I've been wanting to do this forever. I just... Ever and ever. I can't think of a time where I didn't want to do this. So I'm so excited. Um, I launched my new website in July, about a month ago, and it's gotten a really great reception. Just thank you so much to all of you who have um, sent me an encouraging message or been on the site. Um, Just thanks. I really, really appreciate your support. Um, So what I have on my site, I'm going to go through and show you some of the stuff. Uh, I have knitting bags. That's one thing. This is a zip knitting bag. Um, I use these really heavy duty jeans zippers from YKK. I just like them. They're just so sturdy and brass and I just love them. My signature color is kind of a gold and a brown leather. Like this right here is a signature progress keeper. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you can see it's got the gold and the brown leather with the brass. Everything is kind of along those lines in my shop. So um, it has a handle, which is like a heavy canvas e handle. Um, this particular one is this denim railroad stripe fabric, and it's got my whoop. <laughs> it's got my little label on there, the cork label with my name on it. Um, On the inside, this is just like a good single skein project bag, but this is my standard bag size. So um, if you're interested in a knitting bag, this is the one that I currently am doing. Um, There are going to be sock kits coming soon. Is this crooked? (laughs) Wait a minute, is that better? I don't know. (laughs) I kind of, you know, honestly guys, I podcast so seldom that when I do, I have to like relearn all the equipment every time because I'm like, wait a minute, how do I do this? I am really sorry for being such a fair weather podcaster. But you know, I know you guys understand because I understand other podcasters. I mean, we have kids and we have work and we have life. And at some point we have to do the laundry and the dishes and, you know, fold the clothes and sweep the floor. So Anyway, uh, when the sock kits are in the shop, that's going to be in about a week or two, probably closer to two weeks. Uh, It will be a bag this size. I don't have the size written down at the moment. I don't exactly remember what it is, but it's it's like seven by nine, I think. This is a nine inch zipper. So it's probably like a 10 across. Anyway, it's it's in the shop. I write these things down and then they whoop, out they go. So um, anyway, those are the bags. And for the sock kits, I'm doing a uh, progress keeper um, zipper pull that is a felted wool ball. Aren't these so cute? And this is actually the color of 
uh, the progress keeper that's gonna come with the sock kits because um, this is the accent color. I'm so excited. You guys know how I feel about yellow. Uh, and it's a ball of wool. It's so cute. <sighs> so actually this has a silver one on it. This is my own personal one that I've had for a while. Uh, the ones for the kits will have a brass lobster clip and jump ring. Um, okay. So uh, another thing that's in the shop that you can purchase on its own, if you would like, it's white so it blows out a little bit, is uh, these Nitty McPurly hexagon stitch markers. I'm gonna try and show these to you. They're a little bit horizontal and they're kind of, let's see, can you see those? I'm gonna hold it up. So this is a large one. They're hexagon stitch markers. It's hard to show these because, you know, if I hold this up, they're all gonna drop. Um, but I'll try and put a picture up here so you can see what these look like. So that is the large size, and this fits, I believe, up to size 11 needle. Uh, and then the medium size, it's so cute and little. This fits up to a nine, I think. Gosh, why don't I remember any numbers? I don't know. It's on my shop, though. It's in my site www.nittymcpearly.com and you can go find all of the information in there that I am saying very badly. Uh, and this is the littlest. So little. Hold on. You see it? So that is a hexagon that fits needle U.S. needle size up to size 8. So uh, in a tin of stitch markers, you get uh, 24 of them and there are eight small, eight medium, and eight large. And this is also gonna be a part of the sock kit. So the sock kit is gonna be a bag, a progress keeper, a tin of stitch markers, a full skein of sock yarn with a mini skein that contrasts with it, and your choice of a sock pattern. So either the molly, the glazed pecan, or the bear socks. All of which are currently available on my site right now also. Um, yeah, so like I said, in about two weeks, you're going to be able to find these sock kits. I'm so excited. Um, I'd like to be able to work with different yarn dyers, um, who, you know, the ones who do the yarn, because I don't dye yarn myself. I'm getting this yarn from yarn dyers. My first yarn dyer is Kim of Kim Dyes Yarn. Um, she is wonderful. I just love her so much. She's local to me. She lives about 40 minutes from my house. And we still haven't met. Kim, we need to like have lunch or something. That would be amazing. Actually, we're gonna meet at the Shenandoah Fiber Festival, but I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but she is just so nice and so professional. Um, her yarn is amazing. She is so talented. If you don't follow her or you haven't been on her website, Kim Dyes Yarn, she's great. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna let the rest of that sock kit be a, a surprise, the fabric and uh, the yarn colors and whatnot. But if you watch out on Instagram, um, or if you go sign up for my newsletter on my um, website. There's a place at the bottom where you can sign up for the newsletter and that will get you all the new product info and sales and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, the other things that I have in my shop that have been a bit popular are my necklaces. This is mine. So this is like one of the first ones that I made and mine has a bit of a patina on it because I took it in the pool. I didn't take it in the pool. I feel like I wore it in the pool, <laughs> but I um, I wore it to the pool. Somebody had a swimming lesson or, I can't remember why I had this on and I wasn't in a bathing suit in the pool, but I got splashed. And you can see it just has a bit of a patina on the gold leaf there. But um, I wear this necklace all the time. I like the patina, uh, but the earrings, I don't think I had the earrings on that day. So you can see, uh, these are the ones, I talked about these on a few podcasts ago. Um, and that was back when I was just making them for fun and for myself and I made them for a giveaway. I love them so much. I get so many compliments on them and um, they've done really well in the shop. So if you're a person who likes leather earrings or just likes uh, lightweight earrings, um, these are great. They have, these are a little bit older too. They're starting to patina a little bit. I'll show you a new set, what they look like when they first come. I like it like this. I don't know, I'm not a, person who likes things to be perfect. Um, however, 
These do have uh, 18 karat gold plating on the wire. So you can wear them all day long because I hate when you get cheap earrings and they hurt your ears because gosh, I don't want to buy earrings that I can't wear because they hurt to wear them. So I was really careful about all the wires that I use. They're all not just hypoallergenic, but um, a precious metal, either gold or silver, um, because I don't want them to hurt my ears. So this is what the pair looks like when you first get them. The gold is a little bit, uh, you know, more bright. I don't know if that's brighter or not. Looks about the same. Uh, but I've had mine for a while, maybe six months. So, um, and I wear them every day. And I usually wear the necklace with it too. Uh, no, not six, yeah, maybe six months. I don't know, it's been a while. Uh, I usually wear the necklace. Sometimes I'll wear it under a shawl. A lot of times I wear it in the summer because I don't wear a shawl and I need a neck accessory. So these are available in my shop and I have a coupon code for podcast watchers. So I'll give that in just a minute. Um, I love sales. I do sales all the time. So, you know, if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get info on those. If you follow me on Instagram, I, I talk about those a lot on there. Those are really the two best places to find out about my sales, but I love them. I don't ever wanna buy anything that's not on sale. I want to, you know, get a deal. So I love to give deals. So they're always out there, just look for them. Um, okay. So another thing I have in my shop uh, are these little leather zipper pulls. It's a little too big to be a progress keeper, but it has a lobster clasp and it just attaches to a zipper pull on a bag. Uh, and so you can find those in the shop. Uh, and I did a Harry Potter shop update on July 31st, Harry's birthday. And I still have some of these, can you see them? Deathly Hallows earrings. My daughters wear these all the time. They're, these are their everyday earrings. The wires, again, are sterling silver plated, so they will not bother your ears. They wear them all the time, even sleep in them, because they have like a little um, stopper on the back of the earring so they won't fall out. If you, Some people throw those away. I think for years I used to throw them away, but really they work as earring backs. Then they help. Okay. Yay for technical difficulties. All right, anyway, um, these Deathly Hallows earrings are still in the shop. And there are also some, here, let me see if I can take one of those out of there so you can see it. There are also some Deathly Hallows um, progress keepers in there too, which is the same as the earring, but it is on a lobster claw clasp. So there, see, they're small. They're just little. They're not very big and they don't dangle down a lot. There's not an O on there. It's just the death, oops, like that. It's just the Deathly Hallows on the little um, wire. So yeah, exciting stuff. You guys, this has been so fun. I have just loved it so much. Um, okay, uh, these are no longer for sale, but just in case you didn't see, and tell me what you think, maybe I should do these again. This is a Harry Potter bag that I did um, back in July. It's got, it's got this little uh, tab on it that you could attach uh, something to if you wanted. It has, uh, this one actually has two zipper pulls. It has a platform nine and three quarters, and then the Deathly Hallows is on there too. Now this is a smaller bag. The one I did, the Harry Potter ones I did are smaller than my usual size bags. So they're a little bit smaller, but I could certainly do bigger ones if you guys like them. And I embroidered these glasses and lightning scar on here kind of to go with this. And on the inside, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's the Harry Potter, can you see it? It's the one from Spoonflower, here, there hard to see but it's the glass it's hard to see but it's the glasses with the lightning scar fabric there it is I don't know why I'm struggling so much to show things today but it's the glasses with the lightning scar fabric and it's just so cute so anyway these are not currently for sale uh, they sold out like that they were just gone in like 10 minutes so I guess I probably should take that as a sign that you guys like them and maybe I should have them more often or maybe something a little bit different let me ask you this um, 
I did bags like this too, and these are not in the shop. This is a bag style and it has a flat bottom. This is a bag style that I do for giveaways. And I don't know, do you like it? Do you think I should put this in the shop? It has a snap. <laughs> it has a snap so that, you know, like if you're on an airplane, my biggest thing is when I'm on an airplane, I don't want, I wanna be able to bring my knitting bag because I like it because you can knit out of it as you walk around. But I don't want, like if I want to put it on the floor, I don't want it falling over and spilling everywhere. So I like to have this snap in there. And on the inside, there is um, there are two small pockets on this side and a bigger pocket on this side. The smaller ones are cell phone size, and the bigger one is like, you know, chapstick and whatever else you put in your knitting bag. But I don't know. I don't have very many of these right now, but I'm thinking maybe, I don't know. What do you think? I would love to hear your opinion on, you know, which type of bag you like to see more, the zipper one with the handle or this kind of walk around with it. I like this because I can walk with it uh, and I can, you know, have my knitting out and just be working as I go. So anyway, not currently listed. Let me know what you think. I'm open to doing more. Okay, so that is most of the stuff that I have in my shop. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, see the good thing about podcasting every two months is that you have a lot to talk about. <laughs> so uh, this sweater that I am currently wearing, it buttons up beautifully, but it's like 96 degrees today. I have the air conditioning on in here, but it's hot today. Uh, this is the Brass Tacks sweater. You can see it has a uh, rolled collar. It's unfinished at the top, which I love. I love how that lays. It is a round yoke, top down sweater knit in one color. And it has this detail on the sleeves where it comes to a point right here. And that's twisted rib, okay? And then I'm just gonna stand up a little bit. Can you see it? Yeah, that's good. I never wear belts. I don't know why I'm wearing a belt. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, the side. And I'll see if I can put a picture up too. This is my latest pattern. And this is knit in DK weight yarn from 29 Bridges Studio, which I've talked about a lot. Mary, she lives in Maryland. Oh, Mary from Maryland. <laughs> Easy to remember. Um, she's great. She's just so sweet. She and her husband um, go to shows together and he's like the guy who takes the money and she does the yarn and they're just so, so sweet and cute. Um, she's going to have sweater quantities of yarn if you want to make this sweater in her yarn. Uh, this is, I think, I don't know, words in my brain and numbers, they just gone. Anyway, uh, it's DK, I think it's 100% Superwash Merino. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And um, like I said, she'll have sweater kits, follow her on Instagram. She doesn't post a lot, uh, but she does have a beautiful website too. She and Kim both have amazing websites. So go check her out, uh, 29 Bridges Studio. And this color is called Brass Tacks, and that's also the name of the sweater. This sweater comes out on Monday, August 25th. Uh, you will be able to see it on Ravelry, but uh, I sell it now on my own site. So on Ravelry, you'll just see a link. Please visit my website to buy this pattern. So uh, that's where it is. It's at www.nittymcpearly.com. So that's that. I love this sweater. I'm so excited to wear it. It's, it's obviously too hot. It's August in Virginia and you know, 96 degrees is just kind of what we do here. So too hot for it right now, but I can't wait to wear it. I, I was motivated to make this sweater because I have a store-bought yellow sweater from Ann Taylor Loft um, that I wore every single Sunday to church. Like I wear it all the time. And I wanted a handmade version. And that sweater is just plain. The, the Loft one is it's just a plain cardigan of about this color. So the details are a little bit more special, obviously. And it's more special because I made the sweater myself. So that was my motivation for making the sweater because I wanted to replace a store-bought sweater that I love with a handmade sweater. And I'm not gonna get rid of that sweater. I'm still gonna wear it sometimes, but I'll wear this one on more special occasions. So, um, okay, what else do I wanna talk about? In addition to the sock kits coming to the shop, 
there will also be stitch marker necklaces. Yes, I'm so excited. You guys, like I live for this. It just, it just fills me with joy. <laughs> um, so a while ago, can't remember when, it's a date, I don't know. I bought the stitch marker necklace from Magpie Fibers. They also have stitch marker necklaces and they use the same kind of ball chain that I use. And the stitch marker necklaces that they do are like a round, it's got like metal on the outside and then it's just a glass front and a glass back and there's stitch markers in there and it's a locket and it opens up. Um, it cost me $35 and I wore it all the time. I really liked it. And then one day one of my kids got it wet and it was like ruined. Like the, it all kind of started to rust and I was just so disappointed. Also, after over time, the glass popped off. Like the glass is held on with glue and it popped off. Um, I don't mean to demonize anyone by this. I, I'm, it's just kind of a product review. I love the necklace. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Don't get it wet. And um, I felt like $35 was more than I wanted to pay for a necklace that didn't last a whole year. So I wanted to do my own version. Mine are gonna be different, but they are going to be a locket. Uh, it's gonna be brass again, cause that's my favorite. And um, they're just gonna open up and on the inside are gonna be the brass hexagon stitch markers. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be on my shop and on Instagram within the next week, I hope. Very, very excited about that. Um, let's see. And the price point will be lower. They're gonna be $18 instead of 35. Because my jewelry is not fine jewelry, it's more costume jewelry. I like that kind of jewelry because then I don't worry about it. I don't know, but I, I don't wanna pay a premium jewelry price for jewelry that is costume jewelry. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Okay, so coming soon, stitch marker necklaces and sock kits. Oh, let me give you the coupon code and I will put it up on the screen. It is podcast15. If you go to my website and you enter in the code podcast15, that will give you 15% off your entire order. So please use that. There's also codes for newsletter subscribers. I love codes. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, I also have a giveaway. Gosh, this podcast is just loaded with fun. So the giveaway is for Ravelry codes of the Nomadic Knits issue four. That is the issue that has the Grocery Girls uh, socks, Tracy's socks and Jody's hat, and it has my Potomac cardigan, um, which is a very basic long cardigan with pockets. So if you're interested in that magazine, I have five Ravelry codes to give away um, to five podcast watchers. So please leave me a comment down below. You can say whatever you want in it. I don't care. I will choose five people at random on Sunday, August 25th, 2019. So that's one week. So leave a comment before Sunday, August 25th, 2019. And I usually do it at the very end of the day just to give people time to you know, put in their comments. So I will choose five winners so you have a really good chance at winning um, a digital download of Nomadic Knits. I don't, the Grocery Girls are doing a knit along for all of the patterns in this magazine. I don't know when that ends. I think, I don't know. <laughs> but if you wanna participate in that, uh, enter in and you can win a copy of that magazine digitally. Okay, that was a lot of stuff on the needles. I wanted to say, first of all, with regard to on the needles, there are times that I show things that I'm designing that don't make it. Like I just don't like it or it doesn't look or fit or whatever the way that I want it to. And so I ditch it. For example, I showed this a few episodes back and I love the design of this. What I don't love, and I didn't realize it until I showed it on my podcast, and I watched it back and I was like, I don't like that at all. And it's how the yarn changes. I just don't, I think that's awkward and I don't like it. So I'm scrapping this. 
Um, but you know, that's just what it is. That's fine. I, like I said, I, I still like uh, the shaping. I still like the pattern. Just maybe someday down the line in a different yarn. So I know sometimes I say that, you know, look, this is what I'm working on. It's a new design. And if you never see it again, it's because I ditched it. Uh, but the one I'm about to show you is a sure thing. So this one is going to be coming. My target date right now is November 1st. So this is a children's cardigan. This is how far I am. This is where I am right now. This is a children's cardigan. It is worked from the bottom up and it has, you can see I still have the underarm hole there. It has the rainbow on the sleeves. Let's see if I can show this in a way that, it has color work that is knit flat on the bottom. I've mentioned this before. Working color work flat is not much harder or much different from working it in the round. The only difference is on the wrong side, you hold the floats in the front to keep them on the wrong side. So you're purling, um, you know, back across. I've got like tails and things in there. You're purling back across and you're keeping the floats in the front. So if you are a color work person and you like doing it, but you're nervous about knitting back and forth, like Andrea Mowry's throwback sweater is a color work sweater knit back and forth, and that's how it's done. You just hold the floats to the front on the wrong side. So this is going to be a pocket, and of course, the inside of the pocket's gonna be rainbow, because of course. <laughs> so this is a children's cardigan, as I said. This one is in the size 4T and it's hard it's hard to visualize right now with the pockets as gaping holes and you know all the tails hanging out and stuff but this is a bottom-up cardigan um, and this pattern is going to have some extras if you have a little person in your life who would like a rainbow knitted sweater with a hood it's going to have a hood and maybe a little knitted toy to go with it who's also wearing a rainbow sweater I'm just saying that's coming um, that pattern is gonna be out around November 1st I wanted there to be enough time to knit it before Christmas so keep an eye out for that this one is a sure thing it is definitely coming I am absolutely in love with it and um, I'll give you a sneak peek at the knitted toy color <laughs> This is Cascade 220 Superwash Erin because it's nice when toys can be washed. Still, I would hand wash them. I wouldn't chuck it in the washing machine or anything. Um, but this is a really nice yarn. It feels really good and it uh, can be washed. And it's nice and thick. So you'll get a nice dense toy and it will be um, quick to knit. That was part of my thinking too. So I'm making another one. Let me tell you about this one first real quick. This is Barrett Wool Co. Home Fingering Weight Yarn in the Ellie Gray colorway. And this rainbow is made up of fingering weight yarn from my stash. So we've got um, Madeline Tosh, Twist Light. This orange is from Kim Dye's yarn. Isn't that gorgeous? This is her Fino sock. She has a whole bunch of bases. They're just, she's really, really amazing. So talented, so hardworking. I really just can't say enough good things about Kim. Kim dyes yarn. Okay. Uh, this color is called Warmth, and that's in Fino Sock. The yellow and the green are both Madeline Tosh Sock. Um, the blue is from Clark and L. Hi, Jen. Uh, this color is called Andaman C. That's in her Merino 3-ply. And the purple is in Quince and Co. Chickadee which is technically a sport weight yarn, but it's almost a fingering weight yarn. And the Barrett Woolco fingering is almost a sport weight. So what I'm gonna do is knit another sweater uh, for my other daughter in this color because I wanted it to be sky color. You know, like the sky is gray, but there's the rainbow. So this is, a, the sweater is blue and then there will be the rainbow. You can knit yours in whatever color you want. You can knit it in hot pink Stellina, which I think would be amazing. <laughs> so this is uh, Quince & Co Chickadee. 
uh, which is technically a sport weight yarn, but it's so close to the Barrett Wool fingering that as long as I get gauge, uh, that'll be just fine. It doesn't matter if you use um, a sport weight or a fingering weight as long as you're getting gauge. That's just great. So this pattern, like I said, November 1st, very excited. Another thing that I am working on, um, Kim and I, of Kim Dyes Yarn, <laughs> we are doing a kit kit. I'm not even really sure if it's a kit. Is it a kit, Kim? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> uh, she is dyeing up yarn for that are Virginia inspired colorways because we both live in Virginia. And she is debuting these at the Shenandoah Fiber Festival, which is the weekend of September 27th. Um, I will be there, Kim will be there. She's gonna have many different colorways that are inspired by Virginia. The first one is called Williamsburg. I don't have a picture of that, but I will. I think it will arrive tomorrow. She's shipping it to me. Uh, she shipped it out last night and I'm hoping it'll come tomorrow, maybe on Tuesday. But this is a gorgeous tonal gray that has other colors in there, not speckles, but just, it's amazing. It's a, truly, truly gorgeous. And she's sending it to me on a single ply merino silk blend and I am designing a cowl with cables and baubles. So I just said a lot of words. Let me just sum them up for you again. Cowl, cables and baubles, silk merino and Kim <laughs> and me like it's just going to be amazing I'm so excited this cowl should be out end of September again you'll be able to find it on Ravelry it'll be for sale on my site and I think there might be some hard copies too I'm not exactly sure what we're doing there but if you're going to the Shenandoah Fiber Festival uh, come find Kim at her booth I'm going to be around too so that would be great I would love to meet you please introduce yourself that would be amazing uh, and it's going to be called the Williamsburg Cowl in, you know, homage to the yarn, which is in homage to Williamsburg. It's so funny. I was telling my husband about this because I just get so excited. <laughs> and, you know, if I don't have you guys to tell, I tell my husband and he goes, she's dyeing yarn in Virginia colors. What's a Virginia color? And I was like, dude, if you don't know, I can't help you. <laughs> You should just know. So anyway, the other things I am working on, I can't show you. And this has been a big part of the reason why I don't podcast, because I feel like the stuff that I'm working on, I can't really show. I'm working on a book. Very excited. You guys know the speed at which I work. So it's going to be, you know, this book will come out in two years. <laughs> Um, and I'm not even joking. I think it probably will be two years. I have two patterns that are done, test knit, sample knit, tech edited, photographed, done. Two of them. I have two that are in progress and I have eight more that are in the planning stages. So it is probably going to be two years before this book comes out, but I really wanted to do a book and this is just me talking. I'm not making promises or anything, but this is just kind of my thought process. I wanted to have 12 patterns. I thought it would be cool to have a pattern for every month. Not necessarily to knit them that month. We could if you wanted. You could knit through it in a year. But just to kind of have things that go with that season. Like I've mentioned this before, like having a bralette pattern for the summer, like if, you know, to go under a shirt that is more open and to have a swim cover up in there for the summer months and sweaters and hats and socks and things for fall and winter and spring. So anyway, I'm working on that a lot. I don't really want to share too much of it because I want it to be a surprise when it comes out, but that's happening. It's very exciting. Uh, okay. Knitting fantasies. I don't think I still have my music anymore. <laughs> la, 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 la. So I have four picks for you today for Knitting Fantasies, and I will try and put up pictures on the screen. Uh, my first pick is not a new pattern. This came out maybe a year, six months to a year ago. This is the Ginger Snap Socks by Tabby Gandy. I just think these are so cute. They're just so different, and I just think they're beautiful. They're knit in a sport weight yarn, so it's a little bit of a heavier yarn, but not crazy heavy, not like you couldn't wear shoes with them. I just love the way these look. They have that contrasting chevron shape and they're just 
super pretty. I hope you like them too. Um, my next three picks are all new patterns. The first one is the Super Simple Summer Sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Super simple. It's worsted weight, so I don't know how summery it is unless you knit it in cotton. But it's beautiful. Like, I just love the simplicity of it. It's so basic. It's got big, chunky stripes. And, um... Yeah, it's beautiful. Another hit out of the park by Hohi. Great job, Hohi, as always. Uh, my next pick is Little Love by Anka Strick. I love this series of sweaters. She has a whole big series, Little Love, Big Love, Great Love, and they're very similar sweaters. They just, they might even be exactly the same in terms of pattern. I'm not totally sure about that, but they're all knit in different weights. And the, the newest one is knit in a light fingering weight, and it's called Little Love. So I think it would take forever, but I feel like it would be a, a real staple wardrobe piece. I just think it's so beautiful. And my last pick is Catch My Fall by Melanie Berg. She manages to take shawl knitting just to the next le level every time. This is so beautiful. It is a worsted, no, I'm wrong, Aran weight. It's an Aran weight shawl. It's in a single color very lacy, very blocked. Like you can tell she used the pins and you know, she really blocked it well and it's just so beautiful. I love the way that this looks. And the color she chose, it's like a light blue. She's just an amazing designer. So hats off to you, Melanie. And that is it for Knitting Fantasies. Okay, my next segment is sewing. And I have been working a lot on bags, like I showed you. I've been working on you know, the Harry Potter bags and the bags for my shop. I make those myself. So I've been making those a lot. I want to do a lot more sewing than I have time for. Um, but I have some fabric. I have three fabrics that I really wanna make another peppermint ruffle sleeve out of. The peppermint ruffle sleeve top that I have is made from a thicker cotton. It's not a quilting cotton, it's an apparel cotton, but it's just a bit stiffer. And these are all very drapey. The, and I've showed these before. The bottom one and the top one are rayon. And this middle one is crepe. Let's talk about crepe for a minute. This shirt that I'm wearing is made of crepe. It's got a cute tulip sleeve. And uh, crepe is amazing because it doesn't wrinkle. I have a... Uh, fringe dress made out of this crepe and I loaned it to my daughter yesterday and I said please don't let me find this balled up on your floor later please hang it back up in my closet you'll never guess where I found it <laughs> yes it was balled up on her floor and it did not have one single wrinkle in it because it's crepe so if you like a flowy fabric that is maybe a little bit translucent this one is not bad because it's black as long as you're wearing something under it that's not black, then you're really not gonna see it at all. If you wear crepe in a lighter color, it is gonna be a little bit more see-through. Uh, the rayon is not see-through, but it does wrinkle. So I think all of these would make amazing peppermint ruffle sleeve tops. Today is Sunday and we went to church last night. So I have a whole free rest of the day. I mean, you know, as free as my day ever is. <laughs> no children have come in. You guys, this is crazy. But um, anyway, I would love to get a peppermint ruffle sleeve on uh, in one of these fabrics later today. Wouldn't that be amazing? So uh, there's that. Isn't it funny how most of my sewing is like what I want to sew? <laughs> so just because they're in the front, I'm gonna show you these two fabrics. I don't know if I've shown these before. I've had them both for a while. This is a green linen blend. I think this is not 100% linen. It's like a rayon linen blend. And that is nice because it makes it slightly less wrinkle prone. It, I mean, rayon wrinkles too, so it does still wrinkle, but it's still a very thick, dense fabric. So I think whatever I make out of this is going to have a lot of structure. This, can you see it's got like a herringbone? Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. This is um, not super drapey, but it's not super thick either. It's a kind of a thinner fabric. Um, I'm not sure what I wanna make with these, but I definitely wanna work with them now that it's fall. They're just so pretty. Okay, I'll probably, those will probably just sit there because I don't really have a plan for them. Um, 
Okay, so I've talked to you about bathing suits and how I've been wanting to make them just forever and ever. And I got the bombshell bathing suit by Closet Case Patterns, and this is a beautiful pattern. But for some reason, I was not motivated to sew it. I think it was, it was a little complicated and I make complicated things. It's not like I don't like patterns that are complicated, but for some reason I was put off by this one, not because of the pattern, just because of me. Like, I think I was already doing something outside my comfort zone, which was sewing swimwear. And I chose a pattern that was too difficult. So I went with the Cotslow swimsuit by Megan Nielsen. Megan Nielsen's patterns are amazing. She is Australian and like super young, way younger than I figured she would be for as awesome as she is. But her patterns, I've made a couple of them and they are always great. So I highly, highly recommend them. I'll start with the one that turned out the worst. <laughs> this is a, a Cotslow that I made for my daughter. Did I make this one first? I can't remember. So this is, the reason it turned out the worst is because of the fabric choice. Do you see the pilling? This is a swimsuit fabric and she only wore this on our beach trip. Like she's only worn this probably every day for a week. And you can see how badly the fabric is pilling. I've talked before about where to buy fabric and I do typically buy my fabric from fabric.com. Uh, I did get this there and it was not super expensive. I think with swimsuit fabric, you get what you pay for. So if you're looking for a fabric and you're like, I just want to kind of learn how to make swimsuits, get the one that $6 a yard because it only takes one yard to make a bathing suit. Almost any pattern you have, unless it's got lots of ruffly stuff, it's only going to take one yard to make a bathing suit in any size. So you can safely get on a website and buy one yard of, of your swimsuit fabric and have enough. If, if it's fully lined, you might want to also buy a lining fabric so you're not cutting into your more expensive fabric. On this one, I did line it with the same fabric. You know why? Because I couldn't find my lining fabric. <laughs> I don't know. I just couldn't find it. I've since found it, but seriously, like, I don't know. Anyway, you guys, I feel like know me by now. One of the things I wanted to tell you about the bra cups that I put in all of these bathing suits is that they are from old bras. I have saved old bras over the years just because I felt like I could cannibalize them. They have the, the hardware and the cups and I just saved them because I thought I'm gonna be able to use these. I literally just cut the cups out of old bras and so the that's here. You can see those right there on the inside of the swimsuit so that you know you don't see them even from like, you know, on, on the wrong side, you don't see them. So my daughter wore this. She looks great in it. It really, really looks good on her. I'm sad that this happened to the fabric, but it was a learning experience. That's fine. Uh, for next summer, I will make her another one out of better fabric. But this, I will definitely make this bathing suit again. It was wonderful. Now this fabric looks almost the same. I made this one for myself. And, sorry. Uh, again, these have the ties in the back. You can see this I'll link to this pattern online if you want to see it in more detail and I'll put a picture of me wearing this one uh, up on the screen too now this fabric did not pill this fabric looks the same I got it from fabric.com but it's different this has a lot less stretch than the blue one does it's just kind of a heavier fabric and on this one again recycled cups and I used power mesh for the lining power mesh is just a stretchy mesh and it looks like that. I'm showing you this because I didn't know it. It's got some elastic on the bottom. And you can get this anywhere. They have this at Joann Fabrics. They have it online. Uh, this one, this particular one came with a kit from the TaylorMade shop because I was making a bra. So uh, that worked great. One of the things I wasn't sure about is how the bra cups would hold up in the water. I was like, are they gonna get soaked and sag? Like what's gonna happen? They were fine. They're just foam inside. Some of them have like a gel insert in there. They were fine. No problem at all. You can totally cannibalize old bras to use for newer bras or bathing suits. And it's recycling, so I love to recycle. This was my favorite fabric with the foxes. 
And it's funny because it looks like a quilting fabric, but it is not. It is a uh, stretch lycra scuba. And this one I also used power mesh on the inside, and those are just bra cups that I sewed in and then I cut out the middle. Um, I don't have a picture of me wearing this one, but it does have the tie in the back just like they all do. That's an option in the pattern. You don't have to do the tie, but I like it because I like the low scoop back and this just holds you in right at the bust. So you don't feel like you know, you're know you gaping anywhere. But I did make those. I made those in one day. All three bathing suits, I get up at five in the morning. It was the day before our beach vacation. That's how long I put it off. I get up at five in the morning and I finished at about 10 at night. And obviously I don't have like a whole day just to sit and sew. I had to get up and do other things. So um, that's why it took me all day. But, cause it's a really quick pattern. I mean, it really, it, it's great. It's been wonderful. Okay, so that's all I have for sewing. Last, I kind of want to give you a life update. Um, this is one of those things that I don't necessarily want to say publicly because that's kind of scary. I don't, you know, it's, if anyone asked me how I was doing or what's going on with me or, you know, whatever, I would tell anyone face to face, friend to friend, person to person, because that's kind of how we're meant to share things. Um, you know, we live in the world of the internet where we're sharing things publicly and then people can kind of go and do with that what they want. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but that said, you can ask me anything. Like if you wanna know about anything, I'd be more than happy to share with you personally. Um, it's been a crazy year, a lot has happened. And most of it, while it seemed hard or difficult at the time, has been great. Like I am in a great place, my family's in a great place. Um, this coming year, my we made the choice to send my son to public school, which has been amazing. He's three days in and he loves it so much. He rides the school bus, first kid I've ever put on the school bus. And when he sees that bus coming around the corner, he goes, the bus, <laughs> it is the bus best he just loves it so much everyone at the bus stop laughs he's just so ex and, and that's every day it's not like he just did it the one day he does it every day <laughs> he loves it it's it's been so great um my oldest daughter goes to catholic school and that hasn't started yet that starts this week and my other two daughters my daughter who's going to be in fourth grade and then my littlest one who's in pre-k will be home with me this year so i'll be homeschooling two and have two in school um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be great. It's, I'm very excited about all of it. So it's less work on me because my daughter who's going into fourth grade also has academic classes through our church. So one day a week she goes and takes several classes. So really I'm only doing a few subjects at home with her. And the, the one who does pre-K, pre-K just doesn't take very long. It's a lot of reading books and you know drawing pictures and coloring and going to the park and playing so we're going to do a lot of that and that's going to be really fun um i've had a lot of changes for me personally i entered this year with um just a lot of things in my own personal life and with my health and those things are almost completely resolved um God did it. I don't know what else to say about that except God did it. God, you know, came down and plucked me out and helped me, fixed me up. So, you know, bandaged me up and sent me on my way. So it's been a really, really good year for me. So I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate your support. If you watched this far, thank you so much for watching. Tell a friend. Um, I love hearing when you miss the podcast because it k gives me a kick in the butt to do another one. And thank you for supporting my shop. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for following me and subscribing. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. And um, thank you for allowing me to do what I love and help pay the bills in my house. I love to contribute. And the fact that I can do that just means so much to me. So 
Thank you. I really appreciate you. Please subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, sign up on my website to get my newsletter, and you'll get updates on new products and sales, which I have all the time. So thank you again for joining me, and until next time, enjoy your knitting. Bye, knitters. Hi knitters! Welcome to the Knitty McPurley podcast. Uh, I am Devin Ventry. This is the Knitty McPurley podcast and cutting that out. Pfft.